Grand Rising, good morning to my gods and goddesses out there. Welcome back to another Starfire Alchemist, Starfire Alchemy Signal slash Starfire Alchemy Soul Tribe Lecture Message, Channel Message, Decode, etc. Slash Metaphysical Life Mastery Lecture Channel Decode Message. All right. I want to give a major shout out. Oh, Baby, it's 11.38 a.m. on the dot. Let me tell you, before I got started on this, you know, before I get into my uh, work that I do for my channels, my platforms, I take care of my business, okay? Dishes need to be washed, all right? If they need, I, you know, once I make breakfast, I don't leave the kitchen dirty, so I wash up dishes, do my laundry if I need to, and I tend to the plants, okay? The kitty cats that I house sit and the trees okay i have to have some correspondence with the trees i have to go outside and see if there's any messages from the birds <laughs> i have to go and see who's flying around and fluttering about in the backyard and, and overhead to you know to pay attention to the animal totems and synchronicities you know water plants water the garden if needed you know hug a tree touch a tree put my hands on the trees all right sweep off the patio you know just taking that good ass prana baby that good ass nature chi that good ass nature energy and then you know gotta take my supplements my vitamins and sip my tea sip my coffee and, and just feel through everything you know hold a couple crystals put on a couple crystals burn some sage burn some incense burn some palo santo which is incense you know light a couple candles and then i'm in the mood right <laughs> then i'm in the mood i don't mean i was in the mood earlier so i would have been on earlier but as i posted on my main channel community page um i had to get my morning charge up going all right decompression and then um when i woke up this morning there's something that periodically uh happens with my body where um sometimes i get a numbness in my hands from not full numbness but it's like a tingling sensation that goes from my elbows down to my fingertips but it kind of centers in the elbow and in the in the next major joint which is the wrist and so um sometimes that happens after i've been asleep for a while so i think that's a spiritual thing i don't think it's a health concern i think it's a spiritual thing like i told you all before about how i was having pain in my left arm in the muscle because i was pulling energy from other realms and it was getting trapped in my forearm right 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 below the elbow it was getting trapped in my forearm and then i also started to have pain in my left heel and so the energy was coming in on my left side and it was getting trapped and I had to start doing dynamic stretching and really paying attention to going outside and grounding. And, you know, um, I, I did get the trees to assist me with pulling any kind of or balancing my energy because they helped me with grounding. Um, and I know that sounds strange. You can call me crazy. You can call me a weirdo. I don't care. I'm a proud, strange, eccentric magician. Absolutely. Because I've always been different and I've always been one of those people that didn't quite um, fit in. OK. And, and it doesn't mean that I can't go along with the crowd because I was very popular in middle and high school. Uh, but I mean, I've never been someone who did things just like other people. Now, there are similarities in the things that I do because of collective consciousness and there being other star seeds, archangels, gods, goddesses and stuff like me. And a lot of us are physically, spiritually and, uh, you know, we're related. So but I've always been different in that respect. So the trees help me with healing. They absolutely do. Mother Earth Gaia helps me with healing. Um, I've been a shaman in all of my lives, all of my lives. I don't even have conscious remembrance or awareness of all of my lives, but I have been a shamaness in all of my lives. So I have a very close relationship with nature and the cosmos and the trees. I, I've always highly respected. I've never liked to see people cutting down trees. You know, if it has to go, it has to go. You know, if it's a danger to property, mm, I can understand, but I'd rather them cut the tree back than cut it down completely. You know, I've never liked to see um, 
people um, setting forests on fire. I mean, I understand a controlled burn for farmers and stuff like that. But I, you know, I just have that nature element. I'm a Virgo rising. OK, I'm a Virgo ascendant. So that's how I show up in the world. If people had to guess, I, they would probably guess I was a Virgo. All right. And then I have a Mars in Virgo. So that's that magician energy. But um, that is the magician card that Aries Mars Aries rules a magician card. But it's also Gemini Virgo. So that's just straight all up in me. But I have that nature with the. Um, that excuse me connection with nature that I, I do use nature to heal that's why I use the stones and the crystals to help me heal and incense to clear energy and incense can be very healing to you as well um, sage has been scientifically proven to kill germs uh, tea tree eucalyptus aromatherapy oils also known as volatile or essential oils um, they're very very beneficial for the body and I know some people you know a lot of people in the west they rely more on uh, Western or allopathic medicine, but I am definitely into all of the holistic modalities. Plus, I do um, believe in allopathic or Western medicine. So I had to get my tune up or whatever. And after I do these lectures, I'll be going, to, you know, to, to clear my energy and um, ground again, because when I do these lectures or messages, I do end up um, channeling a lot of energies and I do need to ground again afterwards. Now, I want to give a special shout out to the United States Air Force and the United States military at large. Okay, home and abroad, all branches. But I especially for this moment wanna, wanna shout out the United States Air Force because when I posted that um, meme yesterday on my main channel community page, and w for those of you that don't know, my main channel community page is Metaphysical Life Mastery and um, I meant my music to be playing in the background, but my main channel community page is Metaphysical Life Mastery on YouTube. I posted a meme yesterday um, about um, me getting it together. It was a military meme and it was a, it was about an officer. Well, you know, an enlisted man. And they said, you know, watch out for the quiet one because the quiet one is about to cut a fence and get some bastards together. And so that was about my divine feminine uh, channeling that I later came in did where I was talking about whole factions of karmic masculines targeting divine feminines okay and so not even 10 minutes after i posted that meme the united states air force obviously picked it up saw it like i told you i monitor okay they pay attention i've told you all about the jets flying over um, you all have heard in certain videos when I've been speaking, the jets flew over as I was speaking. OK, um, then there was a young empress of mine. She knows who she is. She actually listened to that very video where the jets flew over in my video. This was a couple months ago. And when she listened to the video on her end, she lives almost over a thousand miles away from me. When she listened to the video on her end, jets flew over her fucking house and there's no Air Force base around her location. It just happened to be an air show. During that time period, she looked it up and was like, why are these jets flying over my house? Brie, when I played your video, the jets flew over my house, like right at the moment I was playing your video. As Soon as they flew over in my video and she heard them, they flew over her house in real time. And she's like, why are they flying over, flying over? And then she did a Google search and found out there was an air show in the area at a local airport. But there's no Air Force base in that area. OK, and so these are the synchronicities that happened to me, happened to me. But about 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes after I posted that meme yesterday, talking about being Utha Pendragon and wild ass Uthas on the loose and the military meme. The U.S. Air Force flew over my house. It was a couple of jets that flew over my house. Not even it wasn't even up for 10 minutes. And I went in the bathroom to wash my hands and I heard the rumbling of jets and they flew directly over this house. OK, so I want to give a major shout out. Much love to the United States military and the United States Air Force. I see y'all. I hear y'all. I be paying attention. They flew over this. They were in the area this morning and I don't live right next to the base. So I know when they fly directly over this house, it's an acknowledgement of me. OK, just like the young empress, when they flew over her house, it was an acknowledgement of her. They know who the Sybils are. They know who we are. She's related to me. OK, I shared with you all that I am also a direct descendant of Dr. Buzzard. Dr. Buzzard also connects with her. 
So we're coming together as we should be. So I want to give them a shout out. It's 1147 now. It's 1111 because I, 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 I wanted them to know that I, I noticed them and I appreciate that. I also want to give a special thank you to the author, Rob Stewart, okay, who's a German author. author. I, want to, I want to thank Rob Stewart. He may not ever hear this, but I want to thank him for writing that book called Uther Pendragon. And because it, it came out this year, 2021, it's copyright 2021, because there's not very many publications um, written on Uther, as in modern times. There aren't a lot of books written on me, period. I found that book on eBay and I had never seen it before. I, I went looking for books written on me. I've got some old ones and I've got some new ones, um, newer ones, but this one was the most recent 2021 so see this is the spirit realm conspiring to make sure that people like myself find out who we are so i want to thank rob stewart for writing uther pendragon i purchased your book i have not read through it yet but i am in the first couple i am on the first page i just started reading it last night and i just read a couple of paragraphs last night because it just came in the mail two or three days ago okay so thank you so much for writing um writing my story and it is marked historical fiction but we know it to be the truth because we know it to be the truth all right so i want to talk about demonology i'm going to be presenting a text to you called on the operation of demons this is called celis's dialogue celis is spelled p-s-e-l-l-u-s -L -L it's by michael celis 1682 all right translated by mike marcus collison in 1843 and the new edition which i have is dated 2016 so this is an actual paper text that i uh, that i ordered and um I'm going to read this because it's only like 34 pages. It's like the size of a pamphlet. But so I'm going to read this because it's an important little text. And I'm going to read the back cover to you first. Celis here delivers one of the more in-depth works on demonology which has ever been made, categorizing demons in the form of a Socratic, meaning of Socrates, dialogue between Timothy which was a man, and Thracian, who was a demon. Celis remarks upon the form, the goals, and the nature of the demonic realm in all of its subsets. We see here, for the more secular reader as well, a description of possession as a de facto mental state and a description of speaking in tongues under such power as well. So see... Let me pause here and say I told y'all about motherfuckers speaking in tongues before. This was long before I ever discovered this text. Okay, now I may have known about this text back in a past life, but before I ever discovered this text in this life, I told y'all that a lot of times people are speaking demonic tongues. I'm going to read this sentence to you again. We see here for the more secular reader as well a description of possession as a de facto mental state. And a description of speaking in tongues under such power as well. Moreover, the use of mind altering substances as a way of communication with such entities is not explicit here, but indeed is implied. So what it's saying is some people may use mind altering substances in order to tap in with the demons. And that's why uh, the higher powers had me tell you about smoking all that fucking weed. All right. And how, you you know, people that smoke all that shit and, and do all these drugs, uh, all you're doing is allowing not only certain, um, how can I say, government agencies to tap into your mind and spirit and gain control of you. But you're also allowing the demons that are over those substances and the lower vibrational entities and even some of the ETs that you might not want to fuck with to tap into you and control you like a puppet on a string. So it says the foreword, it says one of the more in-depth resources on demonology ever written before the semi-modern era, Celis's dialogue here between Timothy and Thracy and the demon provides a good expose on several major concepts within the realm of what constitutes such spirits and their natures and their apparent goals delivered in the form of a Socratic dialogue 
the characters themselves used to expound the ideas and concepts of the manuscript likely did not exist. The bits of knowledge delivered then by Celis himself are merely shrouded in the form of a conversation for the benefit of explanation. So what it means is he's saying that the uh, translator is saying that uh, this this character, Timothy probably didn't exist, but it's using Socratic dialogue to explain a point. All right. So a person, a person, a person to entity conversation just to explain things. It says the text more or less conforms to other works on the subject of demonology, categorizing the demons according to their chosen areas of dwelling, which could be the subterranean, mean, meaning underground, aquatic and so forth and their form and so forth. Two things here concern the reader as well, which are implicit in the work, but not explicitly spoken of by Celis. First, we see in the dialogue as it regards one certain demoniac, meaning demon possessed person who is an old woman, that the woman, as described in the text, would be today considered merely just demented or crazy, having grown old and incoherent, muttering in what the reader is led to believe was the Armenian tongue or the uh, language of Armenia. Evidence says Thracian here that demons carry different tongues or languages and they reign in different nations or lands. Now, I will be ad libbing as needed and I will let you know when I'm ad libbing as needed. Now, Thracia is a part of old Greece. So there's it's talking about an old woman from Armenia. Now, who was just in a conflict? A conflict. Azerbaijan and Armenia and I had channelings about those regions before not long ago. Secondly, we have our reference not to genuine possession, but to the use of drugs. Even Thracian, the demon here echoing what he heard from one individual named Marcus expounds on the concept that demoniacs or demon possessed people often see no genuine miracles, but are merely deluded by falsehoods and illusions. During these rituals, then, they see comets where there are none and a certain African vagabond or homeless or transient person, also a necromancer of some sort, at one point, at one point indulges this same Marcus, meaning a man, in a ritual where he delivers to him some form of herbal tincture, which convinces him that a large raven... A blackbird has swooped in on his countenance or on his person and down his throat and as he sees various strange things. So they're saying a African necromancer of vagabond uh, puts a ritual, puts Marcus the character in this text in a ritual and gives him some herbal tincture and then convinces him that a big ass crow uh, goes down his throat and uh, Marcus then begins to hallucinate and see various strange things. All right. The connection of such of such tales as this is the imbibing of variously, of course, substances, but the imbibing of Hisosiamus Niger, which is known as Black Henbane, H-E-N-B-A-N-E, -E, and Datura Stramonium, which is another type of herb and other various forms of nightshades that cannot be overlooked. So nightshades are a class of herb or flower. Night, an example of a nightshade would be belladonna. Belladonna is known historically and in ancient texts and in ancient exorcism and I will say higher level exorcism knowledge and rites to be used for subjugation and subduing of demons when they possess people belladonna belladonna is also very sedating and it can be and it's poisonous many of the nightshades are poisonous not all of them An, another example of nightshades of the nightshade family i'm telling you it's not written here is sweet peas sweet peas the vegetable they're of the nightshade family okay Continuing, it says, even the words of the Bible as they relate, for example, to the tale of demons entering a herd of pigs. And this is referencing in the Bible the Gerasene or Gerasene demoniac. So, even the words of the Bible as they relate, for example, to the tale of demons entering a herd of pigs and driving them mad, subsequently drowning them in the ocean, is normalized 
and explained here. We might even say that this and other notes within the work cast a slightly humanizing light over the very concept of a demon, for it is not out of malice that such a thing is done, so claims Thracian, but rather out of a sinful manner of lust for bodily warmth and the natural attraction from the only pseudo-corporeal or false body demonic spirit to the corporeal, the physical body or physical plane, mortal flesh of an animal or human. So what it's saying is Thracian claims that a lot of times they don't possess because Thracian's the demon. Keep that in mind. It's not the person. Thracian is the demon speaking in this text. Thracian is saying that they don't a lot of times possess people out of malice, but they have a lust. OK, a sinful uh, lust for wanting to use the human body and the, the warmth of the human body and they have a natural attraction okay that's why a lot of times they possess but Christianity teaches you that it's all because they're evil no there's it's deeper than that and that's why Christianity has a lot of problems and that's why you see a lot of problems within people who are stuck under its doctrine because it's very limiting and it's very base in the majority of its teachings it teaches it keeps you bound at a certain level, which is usually 3D. Christianity does not allow people to ascend spiritually or mentally. And I don't care who doesn't agree with that. It does not allow people to ascend spiritually or mentally. Now, it doesn't mean that it's all bad. What I'm saying is you can only go so far with Christianity. That sinner's prayer is anti-scriptural. Talking about you getting saved. No, you're not saved until you're done living your life. Then the Most High will decide what you've done. You don't get saved at 30 and then become a hellion, but say, oh, I was saved at 30, but I'm going to live the rest of my life, you know, shucking and jiving and backsliding as a Christian say, and then decide that, oh, because I got saved at 30, I can act like an ass until I'm 70 and until I'm, I'm up out of here and I'm going to heaven. It don't work like that. And they lie to you in them churches. Okay. That's why a lot of motherfucking Christians are in hell or will be going. <laughs> The author of this work cut off the dialogue before Thracian could explain the concept of foreknowledge or premonition inherent to demons as questioned by Timothy, the uh, man in this book. This text has been rendered into modern English where possible without changing the fundamental meaning of the text. All right. Now we're starting here. It says this is the dialogue. Timothy, the man asks, is it long Thracian since you visited Byzantium? Anybody who knows history knows where Byzantium was and the, and the kingdom of the Byzantine Empire was. Thracian, the demon, says, yes, it is long, Timothy. Two years, perhaps or more, I've been abroad, meaning I've been traveling, bitch. I ain't been, I ain't been to Byz Byzantium in about two years. It's been a while since I've been around the way. Timothy says, but where and why? And engaged in what business were you away so long? Tim so Timothy's asking, okay, so if you've been gone for two years, Thracian, what you been doing? Thracian says, the questions you put would take too long to answer just now. In other words, you asking too much motherfucking questions. You in my business, nigga. Don't be asking me all them questions. It's none of your goddamn business. Too long for me to answer. I'm not going into detail. You don't need to know all of that. That's what Thracian is basically saying. So, yeah, I'm going to be ad living in this motherfucker. Absolutely. <laughs> and Thracian says, I must devise Alcinius's narrative if I am obliged to particularize or tell you the details of everything I was present at and everything I endured. And while constrained to associate with impious characters, those Yucate, or as many call them, enthusiasts, have you not heard of them at all? So I don't know who the Yucate or the enthusiasts are, but I'm going to um, tell you who the Yucate are historically. Now, I have not read this text in full, actually, uh, before I started in on this. So uh, I will pause as needed to tell you the definition so yucate are also known as yukites they were a sect of ancient heretics who were first formed into a religious body towards the end of the fourth century though their doctrine and their disciplines subsisted in syria egypt and other eastern countries this was before the birth of 
Christ. They were thus called Eukites or Eukate because they prayed without ceasing, imagining that prayer alone was sufficient to save them. Have mercy. I just told you about that sinner's prayer. Now, I didn't look up Eukate before I talked about that. So I'm it's all coming together. They believed that praying was alone enough to save them. OK, that's why he said they're called Eukate or enthusiasts or in other words motherfucking zealots i'm gonna tell you they're zealots and they're also known as messalians m-a-s-s-a-l-i-a-n-s yucate is spelled e-u-c-h-i-t-a-e -E, also spelled yukite e-u-c-h-i-t-e-s yukites and enthusiasts or messalians as i said all right so Thracians like, have you not heard of these, I, you know, these impious characters? I had to, I was constrained and forced to associate with these impious. He's, impious means not holy, not, not um, humble characters. Okay, so obviously these people were very arrogant. The Yucate, Yukites, or Massalians were very arrogant. And Thracians like, I was forced to put up with their, their shit. Have you not heard of these, uh, these um christian zealots this was pre-christ but i'm gonna call them christian zealots because they were a christian sect from mesopotamia and they spread into asia minor asia minor and thrace okay so timothy says why i understand that there are among us individuals as godless as they are absurd comma and that in the midst of the sacred they jeer, but as to their dogmas, their customs, their laws, their proceedings, their discourses, I have not yet been able to learn anything about them. Wherefore, I beg of you to please tell me most explicitly or tell me very thoroughly whatever you might know, Thracian, if you are disposed to oblige an intimate acquaintance. I will even add a friend. So if you want to take me on as a friend or mentee, Thracian, I want you to tell me everything you know about these godless, absurd individuals who, even though they claim to be so sacred, they jeer along with their dogmatic views, their laws, their customs, their proceedings, and their hard-hitting discourses. Don't it sound like some motherfucking Pharisees and Sadducees to you? That's what it sounded like to me, the spirit of Pharisee. See, that's an old demonic spirit. And it's been in many Christian and pre-Christian sects, as well as antediluvian sects, S-E-C-T-S, sex, throughout the world. That's an old, that Pharisee spirit, that Sadducee spirit is an old motherfucker, okay? It's been in many parts of the world. You know, I'm holy and I'm godly and I pray and I cover myself in all these, you know, cloaks and and. and 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 holy regalia and you know i'm oiled up and i'm insert incensed up and i'm perfumed up but my soul is raggedy it's raggedy my house looks so fancy my vessel looks so nice and clean and holy and i'm always on my fucking knees but i'm a heathen a goddamn heretic the most high don't know me that's the spirit of pharisee A.K.A. the spirit of Sadducee, A.K.A. the spirit of Yucate, Massalian, and or Yukite, and any other group that operates like that under that fucking energy. <laughs> so, Thracian was like, mm, even have it so, friend Timothy, though it be enough to give one a headache if he but attempt to describe the outlandish doctrines and doings of demonology. And though you cannot possibly derive any advantage from such description, for if it be true what Simonides says, S-I-M-O-N-I-D-S says, who is a philosopher, that the statement of facts is their delineation or it delineates from truth, then and that therefore the statement of unprofitable facts must be profitable and that the statement of unprofitable facts quite the opposite. What possible benefit could you derive from my delineating their seductive statements. So in other words, Thracian is saying, okay, Timothy, we can be friends, but what are you gonna get out of me telling you about this outlandish, outlandish 
doctrine and doings and foolishness of what they talk about regarding demonology. Okay. Because the statement of unprofitable facts must be profitable. So in other words, if it's a fact that does, if it's an unprofitable fact, just making the statement must give you something. It must, it must profit you something. And the statement of unprofitable facts, quite the opposite. How could it benefit you? Because by me telling you it's delineating, it's deviating from truth It's dinner is deviating from fact itself is what he's saying. Remember, this is a Socratic dialogue of Socrates. So if you're not familiar with philosophy and how they would argue and debate, you might want to definitely check out Socratic dialogue, Socrates, the Stoics, uh, philosophers like Simonides, okay, and others. And you will understand how they would debate and, and, and pose these in opposing arguments. All right. I've been studying philosophy myself since I was in seventh grade. <coughs> Excuse me. Timothy says, nay, but I shall be greatly benefited. So Timothy's like, no, Thracian, like you might find you might think that this is not going to help me. But no, I will be greatly benefited, Thracian. Surely it is not unserviceable for physicians to be acquainted with drugs of a daily nature it's that so none may be endangered by the use of these things. Besides, some of the particulars or details at all events will not be unprofitable. We have our choice, therefore, either to carry off from your disquisition what is profitable or to be on guard of it if it have anything pernicious or problematic. OK, Thracian says, agreed, my friend, you shall hear, as the poet says, truths, certainly, but most unpleasant ones. But if my narrative or my story advert to a to certain unseeming, excuse me, if my narrative advert to certain unseemly proceedings, I request of you in common justice not to be angry with me who relates them but with those who do them. So Thracian is like, I'm going to tell you some shit. Don't get mad at me. Don't, th don't shoot the messenger. Be mad at the motherfuckers that actually believe this shit and are, and are actually doing it. Okay. I'm warning you ahead of time. Timothy, the doctor, the physician I'm about to tell you some shit. You want to know, don't be mad when I tell you what they do. Be mad at the motherfuckers who doing it. So this execrable doctrine, had its rise with Manes the Maniac, M-A-N-E-S, the Maniac. From him, their multitudinous origins have flowed down as from a fetid fountain. So from this Maniac, let me tell you about Manes the Maniac. Manes the Maniac, um... Like I said, some of these people are fictional, but that's what it's called in this text. It says, so these doctrines came with from Manes the Maniac and from him their multitudinous or a lot of uh, numerous origins have flowed down as if from a fetid fountain. For according to the accursed Manes, there were two origins of all things. He with a senseless impiety or he was sense senselessly arrogant, a fool opposed a god lowercase g the author of evil to god uppercase g the creator of every good a ruler of the wickedness of the terrestrial or of the earth to the bounteous or, or very very rich ruler of the celestial so what he's saying is manes was a fucking fool he opposed an earth god an author of evil to the celestial God, most high, the creator. OK, the bounteous ruler of the celestial things, but the demoniacal Yucate or the zealots, as I talked about before, have adopted yet even a third origin. According to them, there were two sons with their father that make the senior and the junior origin. So to the father, they have assigned the supra mundane region solely. To the younger son, they said that this is the source of the atmospheric region or the higher atmospheres or dimensions or planes. And to the elder son or the senior, the government of things in the world. So 
what they said is their father, the senior and the junior, two sons. So the senior, no, so it says the father, they have assigned the super mundane region solely. Super mundane means above the mundane. Okay. To the younger son, out of the two sons, they assign the atmospheric region or the higher atmospheres. And to the older son or the elder, they assign the government of things in the world. So like principalities and a theory which differs in nothing from the Greek mythology, according to which the universe is portioned out into three parts. So he's saying that the Yucate basically copied Greek myth in dividing the um, the high, the, the over the earth or outside of the earth, the higher earth and then the mundane or the lower earth principalities. These rotten minded men, which he's Thracian is referring to the Yucate, having laid this rotten foundation thus far are unanimous in their sentiments. But from this point are divided in their judgments into three parties. Some of these rotten men yield worship to both sons. Maintaining that though they are in variance or these sons oppose each other, they are both equally deserving of being worshipped because they are are springing from the same parent the father and yet will be reconciled because they come from the same source but others of these men serve the younger son as being the governor of the superior or the higher region which extends immediately over the earth so this is the higher atmospheres and yet they do not absolutely disdain or look down on the elder son or the older son but are on their guard of him as of one who has it in his power to do them injury while these third party of men or third uh, section of men who are even further sunk in impiety or arrogance withdraw altogether from the worship of the celestial son and enshrine in their hearts the earthly alone even satan dignifying him with the most august names as the first begotten meaning the first begotten son s-o-n because they're referring to sons s-o-n's not s-u-n's estranged from the father the creator of plants and animals and the rest of the compound beings or composite beings hmm. preferring to make suit to him who is the destroyer and murderer gracious god capter, capital g how many insults do they offer to the celestial god or the creator god whom they pronounce envious and unnatural persecutors of his brother who administers ju judiciously the government of the world and Aver, that is that it is his being puffed up with envy, occasions, earthquakes and hail and famine, on which account they imprecate on him, as well as and that other anathemas, as in particular, that horrible one. So imprecate means they put blame on this other son. All right. Um, the destroyer son which is what he was talking about earlier when he said the evil God, they worship the evil God of the earth. They're saying that they prefer to make suit to him who is the destroyer and the murderer. So they like to worship the destroyer, murderer, Satan set energy set as in Egyptology energy versus the creator celestial God. Okay. And then when um, he he's okay, of course being puffed up with envy, he causes earthquakes, hail and famine. And they blame this on this God, this Satan God or set God or the earthly God, as well as other anathemas or abnormalities in as in particular, that horrible one. All right. So this is uh, Timothy responding and saying, by what train of reasoning have they brought themselves to believe and pronounce Satan a son of God when they not merely the prophetic rising? Excuse me by what train of reasoning about like what makes them think that they have brought to themselves the right to believe and pronounce satan a son of god when not merely the prophetic writings but the oracles capital o of divine truth everywhere speak but of one son and he that reclined on our lord's bosom as is recorded in the holy gospel exclaims concerning the divine logos l-o-g-o-s quote, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, end quote, whence has such a tremendous error assailed them. So in other words, where the hell did they get this other son from when they said there was in the gospel, it said only begotten, only son. So 
Timothy saying, how do they have a right to pronounce Satan a son of God when the gospel said that there was only one, which was Christos, Yeshua. Thracian replies and says, whence Timothy, but from the prince of lies. So Timothy asked where it came from. And Thracian said it came from the prince of lies, capital prince of capital lies. Okay. Who deceives the understandings of his witless votaries by such vain, glorious fiction. Vain, glorious means absolutely full on arrogance. Okay. Fiction vaunting that he will place his throne above the clouds okay and averring that he will be equal to the highest all right just one moment i'm gonna clear my throat okay thank you for pardoning me so i'm gonna read this again because i paused mid-sentence it says whence timothy so tim uh thracian is saying you asking where they got it from talking about a second son being satan second son of god being satan Tim, uh, three sins like, well, they got it from the prince of lies who uh, prince of lies who deceives the understandings of his witless without wit votaries by such vainglorious or very braggadocious and boastful fiction, meaning fiction, not true, vaunting or positively speaking and saying that or vaunting will say to declare vaunting means to declare very boastfully that he will place his throne above the clouds. And averring or declaring positively that he will be equal to the highest. For this very reason, he has been consigned to the outer darkness. And when he appears to them, he announces himself the first begotten son of God and creator of all terrestrial or earthly things who disposes of everything in the world or gets rid of everything in the world or causes or deals with everything in the world. And by this means, following up the peculiar foible of each cheats the fools. Who, have, who ought to have considered him an empty braggart and the arch prince of falsehood and overwhelmed with ridiculed his pompous pretensions instead of believing everything he says and suffering themselves to be led about like oxen by the nose. So three, even the demon is saying they are fools. They should have understood that he's fooling them. The prince of lies is fooling them by declaring himself the son of God. However, it will soon be in their power to convict him of being a liar, for if they insist on his making good, his honored promises, he will turn out no better than the ass in the lion skin, which or the donkey in the lion skin, which means basically the donkey can dress up as a lion, but the donkey is still an ass. OK, at pre when it is attempted to roar like a lion, it's braying betrayed it. So it attempted to roar like a lion and dressed up in the lion's skin, but it ended up going e all <laughs> instead and it betrayed its true identity. At present, however, they resemble the blind and the deaf, deaf and the insane since they cannot perceive from the consanguinity, consanguinity, consanguinity. That's a tongue a tongue tire the consanguinity of universal nature consanguinity means uh cohesiveness basically of universal nature that there is but one creator nor here that very consang consanguinity declaring the self same truth nor discover by reasoning that if there were two opposite creators there would not be that one arrangement and oneness that binds all things together. As the prophet says, quote, the ox and the ass know their master and their master's crib, end quote. But these fools bid their master farewell and have elected to the place of God, capital G, the most abject of all creatures. Quote, scorched though they be with the fire, end quote, as the proverb says, they yet follow and precipitate themselves into that fire, which has long been provided for him, meaning the devil, excuse me, Satan and his co-apostates, meaning Satan and his followers or uh, co-leaders. OK. An apostate is like a heretic. A false prophet. OK. So um, the demon Thracian is even saying like. They put Satan to be elected to the place that God rules when Satan is the most abject and most despised of all creatures. All right. 
And so by doing this, they precipitate or they predispose themselves right into that fucking fire that was provided for him and his buddies, meaning Satan and his buddies. Timothy says, but what profit do they receive from abjuring the divine religion received from their fathers and rushing on into certain destruction? So Timothy's like, well, what what is the purpose? What does it help them with, you know, by them going against the divine religion and understanding of their fathers? Thracian says, as to profit, I do not know what they get, but I rather think not of it. For though the demons promise them gold and possessions and notoriety or fame, yet you know they cannot give them to any. They do, however, present to the initiated phantasms and flashing appearances, which these men detesters of God, capital G, call visions of God. All right. So what Thracian is saying is, I don't know what they profit, but I'm not really thinking about that. But the demons do promise them gold and possessions and fame, yet you know they cannot even give it to them. And they do, though, present to these initiated, uh, you know, they give them basically false visions, false prophecies, and uh, flashing appearances. So the demons may come and appear to them, and they may, these fools, these Yukites, or you could say may feel like they've got some power because the demons may appear before them. Okay. And these men detesters of God, capital G O D called visions of God. So Thracian is saying the demons promise them things and may try to give them false prophecies, but they actually detest men and they detest the men and women of God, but they will give these hallucinations to the foolish people. And call them visions from God, capital G. So they'll play a game and say these are visions and prophecies from God when it's not. Such as wish to be spectators of them. Gracious heavens, how many shameful things, how many unutterable and detestable things must they witness. For everything which we consider sanctioned by law and a doctrine to be preached and a duty to be practiced, they madly disregard these things. Nay, they even disregard the laws of nature to commit their debaucheries to writing would only befit the impure pen of Archilochus, which is spelled A-R-C-H-I-L-O-C-H-U-S. Nay, I don't think that they that where he present, he would even be loath to commemorate orgies so detestable and vile as were never witnessed in Greece. No, nor in any barbarous lands. For where or when did anyone ever hear that man, that August and sacred animal ate excretions, whether moist or dry? So it's, it's vile, y'all. It's vile. A monstrosity, which I believe not even wild beasts in a rabid state are capable of committing. And yet this is but the preliminary proceeding with these execrable wretches, these fools. Thracian just told that they commit a lot of nasty shit. Okay, and that is a part of satanic rituals, some satanic rituals, okay? And so he, he, Thracian was saying that they're so vile and low. The things that they, they go against, they're insane, they go against nature. Um, they commit very nasty debaucheries and then they write that stuff down. And even someone who, as impure as Archilochus who was um, a very debaucherous person, wouldn't, wouldn't even want to write some of that crap down and, and, and um, involve himself in any uh, orgies like that. All right. So then Timothy says, what for Thracian? Thracian says, oh, this is one of their secrets. They know best who do it. However, on my frequently questioning this point, all I could learn was that the demons became friendly and affable or lovable on their partaking of the excretions. My God. So in other words, y'all, if this is disgusting you, I'm sorry, but it is demonology and the demon is Thracian. 
again as i started the forward they're not saying that thracians are real they're not saying that these characters are real it's meant for explanation but this is a teachable aspect of socratic dialogue that's why it's written in this form of a conversation thracian is saying they consume excretions okay of humans and they are insane and Timothy, the physician, is saying, why would they do such a disgusting and vile thing? And Thracian is saying, well, the only thing I can say is or learn about it was that the demons really enjoyed partaking in those excretions. The demons enjoy consuming it. So when the demons possess these fools, that's why the fools were doing that crazy shit. In this particular, I was satisfied they spoke truth, though incapable of speaking it in other matters, since nothing can be so eminently gratifying to hostile spirits as to see a man who is an object of envy. So the hostile spirits are envious of people or men, man who has been honored with the divine image. So that's why they're envious of mankind. Because and womankind, because they are honored with the divine image but in this particular thracian is saying i'm happy or satisfied that they spoke the truth even though they're not capable of speaking truth in other matters since nothing can be so eminently gratifying to hostile spirits as to see man who is an object of hostile spirits envy man who has been honored with the divine image fall into such a state of degradation this is putting the finishing stroke on their folly or foolishness. So Thracian is basically saying, I'm glad they told the truth, even though they lie about stuff in other ways. Um, but nothing can be so eminently gratifying as to see men consuming excretions in, in such a falling and degraded state. Demons enjoy seeing that. Most of them. Nor is this confined to the antistites of the dogma to whom they tack the appellation apostles. So antistites is, it said antistites of the dogma. So antistites are a presiding officer in the church or a presbyter. Okay, so an antistite would be a presiding officer of their teaching or of their dogma here it says antistites of the dogma or their doctrine to whom they tack the appellation or whom they give the office of they call them apostles but this extends to the yucate and the gnostics but as to their mystical sacrifices god preserve me capital g who could describe it i blush to even repeat these shameful things i witnessed and yet I am bound to repeat them for you, Timothy. You have already prevailed upon me. I will therefore skim over these things lightly, omitting these more shameful proceedings, lest I should seem to be acting out a tragedy. All right. So there is some Latin here that I'm going to read for those that know rat Latin. <laughs> Why did I was about to say Latin? Those that know uh, ancient or old Latin, you will understand what I'm saying. But those that don't, no worries. You can try to decipher it if you want. It's a paragraph. Um, it's a paragraph. So I'm not going to spell every Latin word, but I'll just read it. Just one second. All right, I just want to light some more incense. So it says, Vesperi inim luminibus ascensis quo tempore salutarem domini celebramus passionem in domum pre pro escriptam deductis quas sacrilegi sacri sui. In Nicia Taverunt, Puelis Nicom, Puelis Libidinose, Valentur, in Quancunque Tandem, 
Seu sororum, sei propriam, filiam, seu matrum, quilibet in se insiderit, sequidum et hoc, and that's et hoc, H A C, not et hoc, et hoc in re demonibus rem gratum facere arbitrantur si leges divinas. Transgressi fuerint fur, in quibas coantum quatum est ne nuptia or ne nuptiae cum sanguine cognato contra hantur. So it's something about a fucking sex and a blood ritual. Uh, that's all I'm gonna say. I ain't gonna tell you what it say. I ain't gonna translate that. I'm just going to tell you something about a blood and a sex ritual. Okay. All right. Continuing. It says, Thracian says, having Thracian just told what the ritual is in Latin, which I just read. And then he says, having perfected this right, R-I-T-E, they are dismissed on the expiry of nine months when the unnatural progeny or unnatural children of an unnatural seed is about to be born. They meet again at the same place. So that's how you know it's a sex ritual because they said an unnatural child and an unnatural seed. I can decipher this Latin, but I'm not going to. You picked out a couple of words like sanguine, cognato, okay, transgressi, which is sin. Sanguine is blood, okay. Um, another word was um, libidin. Uh, libidinose which is libido okay or sexual copulation that's all i'm going to say because it's a nasty ritual so it says after nine months the unnatural progeny or seed or offspring of an unnatural seed is about be about to be born they meet again at the same place and on the third day after parturition parturition is on the third day after the child is born tearing the wretched infants from their mothers and scarifying their tender flesh with knives, they catch in basins the dripping blood from these babies. And casting the infants, still breathing on the pile, they consume them. Afterwards, mingling their ashes with the blood in basins, they make a sort of horrible compound with which secretly defiling their food liquid and solid foods like those who mix poison with mead mead is a is a early is an old medieval type of beer or drink like those who mix poison with mead not only they themselves partake of these viands or this nasty mixture others also who are not privy to these secret proceedings so in other words babies born they take blood they sacrifice, they consume, okay? They mix the, the remains in with food and drink, and then they enjoy it as their ritual, but they also give it to people who don't know what the fuck is in their stuff. Okay, this is very nasty. I am going to put a, a, view, a listener discretion advised on this, all right? But again, this is demonology studies. Timothy, the physician, says, what end do they propose to themselves by such a revolting pollution? So what is what do they expect to gain by re this revolting pollution and nasty ritual? Thracian says they are persuaded or convinced that by this means the divine symbols inscribed in our souls are thrust out and expunged. For so long as they continue there, the demon tribe are afraid and they keep aloof as one might from the royal signet attached to a cabinet in order therefore to enable the demons to reside in their souls they without any apprehension or hesitation chase away the divine symbols by their insults to heaven and a profitable exchange they have made of it but not satisfied with per perpetuating or excuse me perpetrating this wickedness themselves they lay a snare for others the polluted viands or polluted food and drink tempting the pious also who without being aware of this pollution partake of this strange food they like so many tantali t-a-n-t-a-l-i 
serving up their children for the entertainment. So Thracian is saying these people do this because they want the divine symbols and light cast out of their soul so the demons can take full ownership. That's why they do the ritual. All right. They're not satisfied with doing the ritual just for themselves. They want to trap others uh, with the demons too. So Timothy says, good heavens, Thracian. This is what my grandfather by the father's side predicted. For once being distressed because some subverted as well as the other privileges of the good is their acquisition of a liberal education. I asked him, will there ever be a restoration? He being then an old man and very uh, sagacious in foreseeing coming events, gently stroking my head and fetching a heavy sigh, replied, quote, my son, my child, do you imagine that they will ever again restore literature or anything excellent? The time is at hand when men will live worse than wild beasts. For now the Antichrist is at hand, even at the doors, and evil precursors in the shape of monstrous doctrines and unlawful practices, no better than the orgies of Bacchus, B-A-C-C-H-U-S, which is also known as Dionysus or Dionysius, as some people spell it, must usher in his advent. And whatever things have been represented by the Greeks in their tragedies, as Saturn and Thyestes, T-H-Y-E-S-T-E-S, -E -E and Tantalus devouring their offspring, Oedipus as in Oedipus from the Greek tragedies as in an Oedipus complex, fearful, enorm excuse me, Oedipus debauching his mother, and Sinyras, which is spelled C-I-N-Y-R-A-S, his daughters, all these fearful enormities will break in upon our state, but see, my son, and be on your guard for no, no for certain that on, not only individuals from the illiterate or not well read or not read and unpolished class, but many also of the learned class will be drawn away into these same debaucherous and evil practices. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the um, people that um, Timothy's grandfather talked about. What was his, uh, yeah, his grand, his uh, paternal grandfather talked about. So the first one I'm going to tell you about it that was mentioned was, because uh, people know who Saturn is. Um, Tantalus is um, a Greek mythological figure. He was most famous for his punishment in Tartarus, and Tartarus is like a hell realm. He was also called Attis, which is spelled A-T-Y-S. He was made to stand in a pool of water beneath a fruit tree with low branches, with the fruit ever eluding his grasp and the water always receding before he could take a drink. So that was his punishment. Um, so obviously what he did, uh, that's the kind of punishment he got in Tartarus, okay? Tan uh, Tantalus was the son of Zeus and the nymph or the water goddess Pluto, P-L-O-U-T-O. -O. So there, see, so a nymph, right, is a water goddess, right? A water spirit. It says Pluto, P-L-O-U-T-O. That's how you know Pluto is feminine because I'm Hades or Pluto. I'm a water goddess. All right. That's why my chart is dominated by water. So they always call him Pluto a man and Hades a man. P-L-O-U-T-O -O is P-L-U-T-O. Pluto is a water nymph. Tantalus is the son of Zeus and Pluto. The water nymph. In Greek myth. Go look it up. Look up Tantalus. T-A-N-T-A-L-U-S. All right. So it mentions Saturn and Thyestes. Okay. So let me tell you about Thyestes. Thyestes is um, in Greek mythology, a king, the king of Olympia. Okay. Thyestes and his brother Atreus, which is spelled A-T-R-E-U-S, were exiled by their father for having murdered their half-brother Chrysippus. C-H-R-Y-S-I-P-P-U-S -P -P in their desire for the throne of Olympia. So it was kind of like a um, kind of like how Set did Osiris um, in Egyptian myth. Um, Thyestes was a king and his brother Atreus, um, they were exiled for killing, murdering their half brother Chrysippus because they wanted the throne. They took refuge in Mycenae, M-Y-C-E-N-A-E, -E, Mycenae, Greece, 
where they ascended the throne upon the absence of King Eurystheus, which is spelled E-U-R-Y-S-T-H-E-U-S, -E who was fighting the Heracle Heracleidae, which is spelled H-E-R-A-C-L-E-I-D-A-E. -E. So, but if you look up Thyestes, T-H-Y-E-S-T-E-S, -E you'll see all of that, okay? Thyestes is also known as Seneca, S-E-N-E-C-A. -E so they have multiple different names, okay? Now, also they mentioned uh, Oedipus. Now, for those that don't know who Oedipus is, I will tell you who Oedipus, because not everybody knows who Oedipus is. It's known as an Oedipus complex in psychology, okay, and philosophy. Oedipus um, was a mythical Greek king of Thebes, so he was a king of, Gre of Egypt. Thebes was in Egypt. And so he was a tragic hero in Greek mythology. He was actually a part of the tragedy or the play. Oedipus accidentally fulfilled a prophecy that he would end up killing his father and marrying his mother, thereby bringing disaster to his city and family. So Oedipus was a part of a Greek tragedy who was a Greek king of Thebes, Egypt. All right. And we know that the Greeks, the ancient Phoenicians, the ancient Minoans, the ancient, the ancient Thracians, the ancient um, Greeks were black. OK, so them being in Egypt or Nubia or Ken Kemet, they, they're the ones who gave Kemet that name. House of Bondage. Egypt was a parent was allegedly named by the Greeks. Egypt, it was called House of Bondage. OK, but the old name is Kemet, Nubia, etc. So I'm going to tell you who when it's when it's called an Oedipus complex is someone who basically is in love with their mother a son in love with their mother but also hates their mother and that's who oedipus was in greek myth in greek in greek tragedies greek tragedies and roman tragedies are some of the best fucking ways to learn about human psychology and the um the the uh, lower self versus the higher self okay i'm just telling you that for those that like plays and poetry and stuff uh Cineros, uh I don't know what Cineros did with his daughters because um, there's so many characters in Greek myth that uh, sometimes I just have to go back and look. <sighs> okay, Cineros uh, in Greek mythology was a famous hero and king of Cyprus. Okay, Cyprus is of course an island in Greece. Uh, accounts vary significantly as to his genealogy or his parentage and family and provide a ver variety of stories concerning him. But in many sources, he is associated with the cult of Aphrodite on Cyprus, on the island of Cyprus, and the cult of Adonis, who was a consort or lover or suitor of Aphrodite. Uh, and Cineros is mentioned as the son of Aphrodite and Adonis, A-D-O-N-I-S. Now, Cineros offered a corselet to Agamemnon. If you've seen that movie Troy with Brad Pitt, Helen of Troy, Troy the movie, you know Agamemnon was king of Mycenae. All right. That's the Trojan horse, Helen of Troy, all of that. Cineros was king of Cyprus. All right. So he gave this corselet to Agamemnon, king of Mycenae, when he found out the Greeks were getting ready to sail to Troy. So when the Greeks were getting ready to invade Troy, he uh, did something for um, Agamemnon. He also said that he would send 50 ships in aid to help the Greeks, but did not keep his promise. Instead, he sent only one ship along with 49 sculpts of ships made of clay. So Cineros basically uh, dipped out when it was time to help, even though he lied. He, he lied and said he was going to help and he didn't. All right. He was in the events of the Trojan War, as I said. Now, my music keeps stopping, so I'm going to find another track, all right, because this is getting on my nerves. It's getting on my nerves, and it's not my network. It's just that track. I'm going to just play something else. Now, um, I will say that I should have said this at the beginning, but I forgot. YouTube has this new um, thing about chapters, allow chapters when you go in the YouTube studio, creator studio on a computer. It says something about allow chapters under the area where you can put the date that it was published, the title, um, language, 
whether it has captions or appeared on TV or whatever. It's something about allow chapters. Um, I don't know if I have to do something, but I think I do have to make sure that's clicked. So I don't know how the chapters work, but you may have to split it up like this because this is a, a longer uh, recording. I'm probably going to do two separate ones, part one and part two. So Timothy says these things, if I am to judge from the result, he spake prophetically. So he's saying my grandfather was speaking prophetically about how people will fall even from the illiterate and the unpolished people to the very learned people will be drawn away into the same low level base nasty practices. But I, Timothy, when I recall to mind his words, my grandfather's words, which are as fresh in my memory now as when he uttered them, I am surprised at what you tell me. So Timothy's like my grandfather prophetically spoke this thing, these things, and you're telling me that they do rituals like this. And my grandfather said it would happen. Thracian says, and well, you may be surprised for many as are the absurd nations described by historians in the far north and the parts about Libya and Syria. Yet I venture to say no one has ever heard of such impiety being practiced by these people in Libya or Syria, nor by the Celts or the Celts. Uh, nor by any other nation near Britain, though destitute of laws and in a savage state. OK, so he's saying that not even the Libyans, the Syrians, the Celts or the barbaric Germanic tribes of the north near Britain. Not even they have these practices, even though they are destitute or lack laws and seem to be in somewhat of a savage state at the time of this writing is what it's saying, which was 1682. Timothy says it is afflicting to think Thracian that such horrible practices should take up their abode or home in our quarter of the world. But a perplexity of long standing respecting demons distresses me. Among other things, I should like to know whether they are manifestly seen by the demoniacal wretches. Thracian says, meaning meaning the demon possessed fools. Thracian says, not a doubt of it, my friend, for this they all strive might and main their assemblage or getting together and their sacrifice and their rites or rituals and every horrible practice of theirs are held for this purpose to bring about a manifestation so they're doing it to try to manifest something and timothy says how then can they being incorporeal meaning how can the demons without having a body be seen with our visible organs or our visible eye, our, our, our flesh eyes thracian says but my good friend they are not incorporeal. So the demons are not incorporeal. The demon tribe do have a body and are conversant with corporeal beings. And or so they they converse and talk to physical beings, which one may learn even from the holy fathers of our religion. If one only addicts himself heartily to magical practices. We so Thracian is like, but they do have a body and they do talk to human beings, which you will learn this if you even got it from the holy fathers of our religion. If one only addicts himself heartily to practicing magic, it says we hear many to relate. Excuse me. It says we hear audibly hear many to relating how the demons appear to them in a bodily form. And I told you all this that they can take human form. I read this to you the other day when I was talking about how uh, what was it was the upload about um, the Al Gold Demon Star in Medusa's head about the demon king who came riding on the back of a lion. He was a leader. He was seen by an actual human being. A human being saw him as a man riding on a lion. And I told y'all they can take human form. And Thracian, who's supposedly a demon, even says we hear many too relating how the demons appear to them in a bodily form. They can appear as humans. And the divine Basilius who beheld invisible things or at least not clear things to our ordinary eyes maintains it that not merely the demons, but even the pure angels have bodies being a sort of thin, aerial and pure spirit. And in proof of this, Basilius adduces the testimony of David meaning David of the Bible, King David, father of Solomon, who was the most celebrated of the prophets, saying, quote, he maketh his angel spirits and his messengers a flame of fire, end quote. And it must needs be even so. For when the ministering spirits are dispatched to their respective employments or jobs or places as the divine Paul or what he's saying, Apostle Paul says, 
they must need to have a body or some kind of body in order to their moving, becoming stationary and apparent. For these effects could not be accomplished otherwise than through the meaning, excuse me, through the medium or means of having a body. So that's how people like me are incarnated archangels. There are certain things, what he's saying, what Thracian is saying, even Apostle Paul was alluding to the fact that angels and demons must, angels especially is what Paul was discussing, have to have a body because there are certain things they cannot get done without having the means or use of a body. Timothy says, how comes it then that in most passages of scripture, they are just spoken of as not having a body or being incorporeal? Thracian says it is the practice both with Christian and profane authors, even the most profane ancient authors to speak of the grosser description of bodies as corporeal. So to overall just say it's a, a physical body, but those which are very thin, eluding both the sight and the touch not only we christians but even many profane authors think fit to call incorporeal so what he's saying is even the most ancient authors all right that were the most truthful and honest and, and raw and profane in what they wrote and said said that the regular or gross or just basic description was of a corporeal body but these bodies are very thin and they elude sight and touch. So you can't see them and see you can't see them and touch them all the time. But he's saying not only we Christians, but many profane authors think fit to call this incorporeal. But it is actually a body is what he's saying. He said they just call it. Incorporeal. The old authors just said, well, they have to have a body, meaning like a flesh body, flesh, bone, skeleton and muscle like we have. Right. But Thracian is saying. They consider that if it's not like a physical body with flesh and blood and bones, then the authors would assume that, oh, they're just incorporeal. But Thracian is trying to explain that, no, just because it's not flesh and bone like we have, like, excuse me, like humans have, because Thracian is not a human. He's saying it's still a body. But still known as some authors calling it incorporeal because they can't see it and they can't touch it. Timothy says, but tell me the body which angels have by natural constitution, is it the same that which demons have? And Thracian says, what folly, what foolishness. There must be a vast difference between the angelic and the demonic. For the angelic emit a sort of extraneous ray. Extraneous means exterior ray. Okay, let me give you the, um, I hadn't seen that word in a while. That's from science, physical science. Extraneous means not constituting an essential or vital element of part or part. It also extraneous means irrelevant or coming from the outside. So I did define that right. So Thracian says, what foolishness or folly? There must be a vast difference between the angelic and the demonic bodies or natural constitutions. Because the angelic emit a sort of extraneous ray and it's oppressive and intolerable to our eyes, to the visible organs, to the human eye. So the angelic emit a ray that comes from the outside of them that is not able to be tolerated or looked upon by human eyes. But as to the demonic, whether it was once of this sort, I cannot say, but so it would seem. For Esaias in the Bible, E-S-A-I-A-S, -A -A disparagingly, disparagingly calls Lucifer, quote unquote, him that had fallen. Now, however, it is an obscure and a darksome sort of thing, saddened in aspect, divested of its kindred light. But the angelic, so he's saying the demonic, the angelic have a ray that comes from that is exterior to them that cannot be that is not. Um, tolerable to the human eye. So the human eye can't tolerate looking on it like it is. But the demonic has an obscure or hidden darksome sort of uh, body. 
it's saddened in its aspect or lowered in its aspect um it is it, it is divested of its kindred light so it, it doesn't have the angelic light because the kindred light will be the kinfolk the angelic light the light that the angels have the demons don't have it okay but the angelic nature is immaterial so it doesn't have a material form and therefore it is capable of penetrating and passing through all solids being more impalpable or unable to be touched than the sun's rays so the angelic body can pass through anything that's solid and it is not able to be touched because it's as bright and hot and radiating as the sun's rays which even passing through transparent bodies the opaque objects on this earth reflect so as to render its stroke endurable for there is something material in it so like the sun's rays can pass through transparent things like glass the opaque objects on this earth reflect the sun's rays so as to render its stroke endurable all right for there is something material in it so the solid objects or opaque or um objects that don't allow light to pass through reflect the sun's ray so that the sun is tolerable through that object because there's some material or matter to it but nothing can interpose opposition to an angel all right nothing can oppose an angel is what he's saying because they present opposition to nothing they can pass through all things solid and the only thing that is thought to be in op an opposition in this energetic and physical science and physics sense would be something solid but not even the solid can oppose or block out an angel so that's why he's saying nothing can interpose opposition to an angel nothing presents an opposition or a blockage to an angel because they present opposition to nothing they are able to pass through any and all things that are solid that would be opposing or blockages not being homogenous homogenous with anything they are not homogenous with anything they don't blend with anything else okay on the other hand the bodies of demons though they are made of made indistinct by their tenuity are yet in some measure material and palpable so the bodies of demons are able to in some way be um material matter and able to be felt palpable able to be felt and touched timothy says i am becoming quite a sage thracian thracian as the proverbs say as the proverb says by these novel accessions of knowledge that you give me for to me indeed this is a novel fact that some demons are corporeal or physical and are able to be touched or felt thracian says there is no novelty in our being ignorant of many things so long as we are men timothy as the saying is it is well however if as ages advance our good sense does increase so thracian is like ain't nothing wrong or special about us being ignorant or not knowing many things because we are men um so long as we are men timothy as the saying it is it is well however if as we get older our good sense increases so in other words ain't nothing special about not knowing a lot of things as men but as you get older you do need to have your knowledge and your sense increase be assured of this that in making these statements i am not uttering lying rhapsodies like the Cretans and the Phoenicians, or excuse me, like the Cretans and the Phoenicians, but I am persuaded of their truth from the Savior's words, which affirm that the demons shall be punished with fire, a punishment they would be incapable of if it were incorporeal. Since a being that is destitute of a body cannot suffer in the body, therefore they must need excuse me therefore their need their must needs undergo wait a minute this is a typo hold on i just realized something thracian is not a demon thracian is a man there's this thing is full of typos it's full of typos and wrong wording so if this new edition was 
brought about by 2016 somebody needs to go back in and correct this because it's full of typos thracian is just somebody um, another man from greece thracian is not a demon but that's why he was saying we as men and as christians but this book was alluding to thracian this being a conversation between a man and a demon there's a lot of typos here but it still got good information nonetheless so i'm gonna keep reading it so um Thracian says, I'm not lying to you like the Cretans and the Phoenicians, but, you know, because I'm persuaded of their truth from the Savior's words, which affirm that the demons shall be punished with fire, a punishment they would be incapable of if they were incorporeal. So if the demons didn't have a body, how are you going to punish them in hell? How are you going to burn them? That's some smart shit there, right? Have you ever heard anybody say that to you? If the demons don't have a body and they're all invisible, how are you going to burn them, bitch? How are you going to tear them up? How you going to send them to hellfire and throw them in the lake of fire if they don't have a body? Then fire would not harm them. Mm. Since a being that is without a body cannot suffer in the body. So in other words, you ain't got a body. You don't care nothing about being burnt. It ain't going to bother you. Since a being that is destitute of a body cannot suffer in the body, therefore they must undergo punishment by the mean of a body. It must be that they have a body that can be made to suffer or can be made to be capable of suffering. Much, however, I have suppressed, which I heard from some who adventured themselves to intuition. For my own part, I have never seen a being of that nature. Heaven grant that I may never behold the fearful looks of demons. But I conversed with a monk in Mesopotamia who really was an initiated inspector of demonic phantasms or demonic beings. OK, um, a phantasm is a type of spirit. And um, what it is, is it's um, a specter or a ghost or an illusion. So it's sometimes people will call it, say a phantasm is a figment of the imagine, imagination. But he's saying, I don't want to ever behold the fearful looks of demons. But Thracian is saying, the man is saying, I conversed with, I did talk with a monk in Mesopotamia who really was an initiated inspector or investigator of demonic ghosts or demonic specters or demonic illusions. These magical practices he afterwards abandoned as worthless and deceptive. And having made his recantation, he attached himself to the true doctrine which we profess and assiduously applying himself underwent a course of instruction at my hands. And he accordingly told me many and extraordinary things about demons. And once on my asking if demons were capable of animal, animal passion, he said, not a doubt, without a doubt. They can have animal passion without a doubt. So the monk gave up magic is what Thracian is saying. And then Thracian asked him if the demons were capable of having animal passion. And the monk was like, yeah, absolutely. And so it says. In Latin, it says, Que mod modem et sperma nanuli eorum emotunt et vermes Quosdam spermate procreant et incredible est in quam excremente quic quam demonibus ines vasave spermatica et vitalia vasa quidem eis in quit me hu jus more nulla insunt superflui autum seu Escremente nesio quid emutunt hoc mihi eserinti credito. Okay, so what the monk was just basically talking about was some sperm and some sex, uh, some procreation. All right, in Latin. And so Thracian continues, continues and says, But, said I, if they derive nourishment, they must derive it as we do. Marcus the monk replied, Quote, some derive this as in the demons, some derive nourishment by inhalation, as for instance, a spirit residing in the lungs and in the nerves, and some derive nourishment by moisture, but not as we do with the mouth, but they derive nourishment as being like sponges and like red fishes or ruddy fishes do 
by drawing nourishment from the extraneous moisture or outside moisture lying around them. And they afterwards void or um, excrete or eliminate as a waste product, a spermatic substance or a substance that's similar to sperm, but they do not at all. Excuse me, it says, but they do not all resemble each other in this particular way, but only via such descriptions of demons as are allied to matter, such as the Lucifugus, as in Lucifugus type of demon. All right. And we do know, as I've said before, Lucifugus Rofacal or Lucifugus Rofacal, okay, is uh, over government in hell. And the aqueous, so Lucifugus type of demon, the aqueous type of demon or water or spirit water type of demon, and then the subterranean or underground type of demon. And um, that ends the quote from what the monk said. And it's uh, so from, excuse me, that ends what, um, yeah, so the monk was like, they get nourishment. So basically what Thracian was asking was, Thracian was like, do they eat and drink and get nourished and nutrients from food and drink like we do? And the monk said, no, some of them get it through inhaling. OK, like some of them, some of these spirits will live in the lungs and in the nerves. I've told y'all that I've told y'all that that people have demons in their spine and in their nerves and in other parts of their body. I told y'all that I told y'all I saw seven demons in my ex-husband's body one day. There were two on the back of his legs and there was one, like in a low. He had some in the lower back and then he had some in the back of the neck and in the skull sitting on top of the skull. And he was at the time that I saw them. In my mind's eye. He was complaining of a lot of calf pain in the back of his calves, exactly where the demons were sitting was where he was having a lot of issues and in his lower back. They were sitting right there in his body. I saw his body in my mind's eye and the demons in certain places in his body. And this monk just said they can get nourishment from inhalation because they can be in the lungs and in the nerves. And from the and they can also get nourishment from moisture. All right. Like sponges suck up moisture. All right. And then so afterwards they will excrete or eliminate as a waste product, a spermatic substance. Are these parasites that people are full of? Some of these are the parasites that people are full of. Some of these are demonic waste products sitting in people's bodies. Okay, so Thracian says, and are there many descriptions of demons, Marcus? I ask again, Marcus is a monk. And Marcus says, the monk says, quote, there are many other than these three, Lucifugus, Aqueous, and Subterranean said he and of every possible variety of figure and conformation so that the air is full of them both that above and that around us the earth and the sea are full of them and as are the lowest subterranean or lowest underground places are full of them there are many other types is what the monk said and the air is full of them the water is full of them and all underground all right so these are your orcs and your urukai that they showed you in Lord of the Rings. And I told y'all that's what the locusts are. I told y'all a long time ago who heard it on my main channel. I said I had a vision, an apocalyptic vision, and there were so many demons in the air that it was like there was no space in between them. That's how many there were in the air. That's the locusts that are spoken about in the Bible. Because when there's a locust swarm, there's so many of them that they can black out the fucking sky. They can block out the sun. That's how many demons there are out here. So it says, uh, then Thracian said, then said I, if it would not be too troublesome, would you specify and talk more about each one of these other types? And the monk says it would be a, a big trouble. It would be a big problem because to recall all these uh, things to my mind that I have dislodged, yet I cannot refuse when you command. And so... <sighs> When he said, yeah, it's going to be like it is going to be troublesome, but I can't refuse you. So he counted off many species of demons, adding their names, their forms and their haunts or the things they do. Or the places they like to stay. Timothy said, what's to hinder you then, Thracian, from telling me all about these, from enumerating them, from explaining them? Thracian says, I was not very solicitous, my good sir to retain either the substance or arrangement of that conversation, nor can I now recollect it. So Thracian said it was so many, I didn't write them down. 
so I can't recall it easily. What possible benefit would I derive from an over solicitude or being overly um, particular about writing this information down in order to retain their names, their haunts, forms and where they, you know, what they resemble and in what ways they dis differ from each other. Therefore, I have allowed such an in insipid matter to escape my memory. Yet I retain a little bit out of what the monk said, a great deal of it. And whatever you're curious about, if you inquire of me, you shall know it. So Thracian is like, I didn't really have a purpose in writing all that stuff down and remembering it. So a lot of it, I, I just put out of my memory, but I didn't retain a little. And so what I know and what you ask me about, what I remember, I will tell you. You shall also know. Timothy says this in particular, I wish to know how many orders of demons are there? Thracian says, he said, meaning the monk said, Marcus, there were in all six species of demons. I know not whether subdividing the entire genus by their habit or by the degree of their attachment to bodies, be that as it may, he laid that the six orders or six uh, types or species were corporeal or physical and mundane. Because in that number, six, all corporeal circumstances are comprised. So he's saying that that's that 666 carbon. Six protons, six electrons, and six neutrons, right? That's why he's saying bit by that number, six, because in all that number, all corporeal or physical or organic circumstances are comprised. The carbon-based number, right? Afterwards, he observed that this first number, six, was represented by the scalene triangle. For that beings of the divine and celestial order were represented by the equilateral triangle as being consistent with itself because it's even on all sides and with difficulty inclined to evil. So in other words, the demons of the numbers, these six species are represented by the scalene triangle because the opposite, the divine beings or the celestial beings are represented by an equilateral triangle because the equilateral triangle is even on all sides and it is very, very difficult to turn an equilateral triangle into something designed for evil. All right. Whilst human beings were represented by the isosceles triangle as being in some measure liable to error in their choice, yet capable of reforming on repentance or re capable of reformation if they repent or turn away from their bad deeds. On the other hand, that the demonic tribe were represented by the scalene triangle as being at variance with itself and not at all approaching to excellence. So he's saying the demonic tribe, demonic species is represented by the scalene triangle because they are not at all, it's, it's variable, it's very chaotic. It's at, it's at variance or at odds with itself. And it is not at all approaching any form of being excellent, okay, or superior. And this is sacred geometry of Gnostics and going way back into some deeper um, occult knowledge here. Now, I want to pause here and tell you all that there was um, that recording, that upload that I did about um, people, Christians speaking in tongues. There was a video that I saw on YouTube that I was referencing. And if you didn't get to hear that upload, I'll put put it in the description box. And I basically rebuked this audio that a popular um, former tarot reader in the tarot or spiritual community who had uh, left tarot and called herself being uh, for Jesus Christ. Um, Nubian News had promoted a video where there was a woman speaking in tongues and someone sent that video to me where Nubian was playing that for her subscribers and encouraging them to listen to this woman who was speaking in or praying in tongues. When I listened to, first of all, I've had a lot of uh, things to say about Nubian news because she is uh, or was a is or was a Luciferian allegedly and she was doing spell work on twin flames and that is why her life is in the state that it's in okay um 
she was scamming people allegedly and doing all kind of fuckery. So now she is reaping what she has sold for years. Um, she's one of those karmics that knows me from Kemet as well and started, you know, she wrote a book based off of a comment I wrote in her um, comments and her that book was Satan and God are twin flames, but the book never came out because she stole the information from me. She had astral projected, uh, came to me on astral a couple of times. This was way back when I had my channel Cosmic Jewel. So this was uh, 2018. Uh, 2017 this was like late 2017 early 2018 so um she was playing this particular prayer and i'm not going to share what the prayer was or the channel of the prayer because the channel already had uh millions of views on it that video where this woman was praying in tongues and prophesying in tongues. But when I heard it, I rebuked it because the tongues were demonic and I immediately knew they were demonic. And I and it sounded like an old um, Eastern European witch language. OK, and it was not a tongue of God. And this woman was praying it over not only a congregation full of people, but there were millions of people who had seen the video on YouTube and had commented. Thousands of people had commented under the video. Oh, she's such a prayer warrior. Oh, she's this. It, it, oh, it's wonderful that that lady was cursing people and Nubian with her dumb ass was playing that for her subscribers. But see, she's done a lot of demonic shit. And that's why she's been thrown out like Nebuchadnezzar was in the Bible. And that's why sometimes I refer to her as Nebuchadnezzar, as do other people. You know, for somebody to claim that they walked away from a million dollar company, but you living in a fucking living in a in a shed. In the backwoods of goddamn Tennessee or wherever the fuck you at. In the south. You're a liar. You were scamming and, and that shit caught up to you. You know, because I remember the days when she was charging people three thousand dollars for high priestess training and all it included was personal emails and correspondence with her. She's not a high priestess. She doesn't have an ability to uh, train anybody on anything. We've seen her downfall. Those that have paid attention for the last four years to her fuckery. She's a charlatan and a false prophet. She was sharing that so that people was getting caught up. Now, she can't say that she didn't know what it was because she did know. She's evil and she's jealous. And I know she listens to me. And I don't give a damn what she thinks about it. Because I've rebuked her multiple times. That particular video I won't be sharing where um, this woman was praying. But I rebuked it. I did a recording about that. On the screen above the congregation in the church where this video was recorded. Of this woman praying in tongues. There were equilateral triangles on the fucking screen. And I mentioned that in my recording. I said they got these fucking triangles on the screen like a demonic portal, a demonic calling card. And now this book, I find it goddamn six, seven months later that says that scalene triangles are associated with the demon tribe. Which explains why Nubian was promoting that. As the demon possessed person she is to her congregation, her cult, to her subscribers. So it says whether he was really of this opinion or not, this is for certain. The monk Marcus counted off six species of demons. And first he mentioned Leliurium, which is spelled L-E-I, excuse me, L-E-L-I-U-R-I-U-M, speaking in his barbarous vernacular tongue, a name which signifies igneous. This order of demons haunts the air above us, for the entire genus of this order has been expelled from the regions adjacent to the moon, as a profane thing with us would be expelled from a temple. So in other words... These demons used to be next to the moon and they were thrown out just like any uh, heathens would be thrown out of a temple. Okay. I told y'all, I told y'all to come from out of place, out of space and that some of them were in the outer limits, what I call the outer darkness, the outer limits. I call it the outer limits. So the second species 
occupies the air that is contiguous to us or along with us and is called by the proper name Ariel, A-E-R-I-A-L. The third is the earthly. The fourth species is aqueous or watery and marine. The fifth species is subterranean or underground. And the last species is the lucifugus, L-U-C-I-F-U-G-U-S, which can scarcely even be considered any sentient being. So it can barely even be considered anything that's uh, intelligent. All these species of demons are haters of God, capital G, and they are enemies of man. And they say that the aqueous and the subterranean or the water in the underground are the worst, are worse than the merely bad. So what it's saying is the aqueous or watery demons and the underground demons are worse than just being merely bad. But that the lucifugus are eminently malicious and mischievous for these said the monk don't merely impair or hinder men's intellects or minds by fantasies and illusions but they destroy them with the same alacrity as we would the most savage wild beast all right alacrity so i can give you the proper context i forgot what that word means i think it would be um audacity okay so yeah well so with the same alacrity with the same they cheerfully uh, destroy men um, as we would most destroy the uh, savage wild beast okay and it says the aqueous or watery demons suffocate in the water all those that approach them so they drown people and the subterranean or underground and lucifugus uh, hardly sentient demons if they can only insinuate themselves into the lungs of those they meet will seize and choke them rendering them an epileptic or an insane person and the aerial and the earthly demons with art and cunning they stealthily approach and deceive men's minds impelling them to unlawful and unnatural lusts but how said i or i thracian asked the monk when he was saying all this how like do they accomplish this and the monk said is by lording it over us and leading us about wherever they please as if we were so many slaves but not by lording, lording it over us, says Marcus. No, excuse me, I just read that wrong. So Thracian is saying, how do they do this? Are they just lording over us? Are they leading us about as if we were slaves, wherever they please? And Marcus says, not by lording it over us, but by leading us into reminiscences or memories. For when we are in an imaginative or dreamy or dreaming, daydreaming spirit, approaching by virtue of their spiritual nature, they whisper descriptions of sensual delights and pleasures, not that they actually emit any distinct sounds, but they insinuate a sort of a murmur that serves with them the place of words. So in other words, when people are daydreaming and going down fucking memory lane and reminiscing, these demons kind of whisper or murmur descriptions of very sensual delights and pleasures. That's how they get men, the earthly and the uh, air spirits the earthly and the air demons rather and thracian says but it is impossible said i they could utter words without sound so marcus just said they don't use words they kind of murmur or whisper but marcus also said they don't really have a sound but thracian is like but how can they utter anything or whisper without sound it is not possible marcus said as you will perceive if you only reflect that when one is speaking to another at a distance he must speak in a high key or a high tone, but if he is near, he need barely murmur and whisper into the ear of his of the person listening to him. And if one could approach the very essence of the soul, there would be no occasion for any sounds whatsoever. But any word we pleased would reach its destination by a noiseless path, a faculty or an ability which they say is possessed by disembodied spirits for they Hold, for they bold communication with each other in a no that's a typo for they hold communication with each other in a noiseless manner in the same way the demons hold communication with us without our perceiving it so that it is impossible to discover from what quarter or what way an attack may be made upon us so in other words because these demons are spirits and they can get they're close to they get close to people's souls. They don't need to talk. They don't need to talk. It's basically psychical. They can just transmit the energy directly into the soul. 
is what he's saying. They communicate with each other without using noises. Okay. It says, um, Thracian says, you need have no doubt on this point. If you only consider what happens in the atmosphere when the sun shines, he combines colors and forms and transmits them them to objects capable of receiving them as we may observe in mirrors. So he's talking about the creator. Wait, are they? No, that's not the creator. It says you need you have no need to doubt this point. If you consider what happens in the atmosphere when the sun shines, it combines colors or he's saying he is in the sun combines colors and forms and transmits them to objects that are capable of receiving them like a mirror. Thus also the demons assume appearances and colors and whatever forms they please and they transform them into our animal spirit and on occasion us in consequence a vast deal of trouble so they give it to, they transform this into the animal spirit and i will say the soul and this as a consequence causes a, gr a, a great deal of trouble and it suggests different designs reviving the recollection of different pleasures obtruding representations of different sensual delights or lusts both during the waking hours and while people are sleeping sometimes too these demons will rouse the baser passions by titillating people or stimulating them sexually they may excite to people to insane and unnatural amours or an insane and unnatural lusts and loves and especially when they find warm perspiration cooperating for in this way, donning Pluto's helmet with craft and the most refined subtlety or being very subtle and very, very uh, nuanced the way they do this, they create a commotion in men's minds. The other description of demons have not a particle of wit, not a bit of wit or smarts and are incapable of being cunning, yet they are very dangerous and very terrible injuring after the manner of the uh, Sharonian spirit c-h-a-r-o-n-e-a-n spirit for as they report the Sharonian spirit destroys everything that comes in its way whether it's a boast man or a bird that's a typo it should say whether it's a beast man or a bird in the same way these demons terrifically or thoroughly destroy everyone they fall in with, injuring them in their body and in their mind and subverting their natural habits. Sometimes they destroy not just men, but even irrational animals in the fire, in the water, or by casting them over precipices or throwing them over cliffs and places where they can fall and die. Now I'm going to um, finish this part and then I will start a part two it says Timothy was like but what can be their object what's their purpose in entering irrational animals for this happened to the swine uh, at Gargosa or Gargosa or um, or Gorgosa um, or Gargotha Gargosa is uh, he's talking about why would they go into irrational animals? Because this did happen with the Gerasene or Gerasene demoniac where the demons went into the pigs or the swine in the Bible. Um, Timothy's like, I'm not surprised if being hostile to men, they injure men. But what is the sense or what is the purpose? It doesn't make any sense for them to go into irrational animals or animals that don't reason. And Thracian says, Marcus the monk said that it was not from any motive of hatred that they would enter the irrational animals, nor from any hostility or hostile intention that they pounced upon some beasts, but from a vehement, de a vehement desire for animal heat because they inhabit the most profound depths, which are cold to the last degree and they're very void or destitute of moisture. They are excessively cold being contracted or um, constricted and pained as a consequence. So what Thracian is saying here, they'll get into animals because they want the animal heat. They want the heat that the animal has in their body because these demons come from a cold depth. And it's kind of like what he was saying about another species where they like the, uh, he the heat in the beginning of this text, where they like the heat of the human body. 
So then he, it continues and says, they're pained, they're cold, they're shivering, they're balled up and tight, contracted. So they get into animals for the warmth and the comfort. They naturally long for a moist and vivifying heat to revel in. Okay. Uh, vivifying would be, um, let me give you the proper context of that word. I know what a vivisection is, but vivi uh, vivifying has to be life-giving. Yeah, okay, vivify means to bring to life or animate. So yeah, they, um, they naturally long for a moist and life-giving heat to revel and enjoy. And they spring, so they go into the irrational animals like they did the swine in the Bible and plunge into baths and pits also. So like warm springs, baths and hot pits, they like to go in there too. And on the other hand, the heat that proceeds from fire, they do avoid the heat from fire because consuming and scorching, this is what the fire would do. But they will gladly attach themselves to the moisture of animals as being congenial to their nature or very loving to the animal's nature. Um, but especially they are loving to the nature of man. They love the nature of man. Now that doesn't mean that they don't love men or mankind or womankind. They love the nature of man and womankind as being most congenial of all. So this is their preference as humans. Okay. And when infused into men or humans, they on occasion make no small uproar. The pores in which the, excuse me, I'm thinking this is uh, the uh, humans, but it says, and when infused into the animals, they cause no small uproar. So they cause a lot of problems. The pores in which the animal spirit resides become clogged. Okay. And the spirit is confined and is displaced by the bulk of the demon's body, which is the cause of their agitating a man's person and injuring their faculties and obstructing their motion. So I was reading it right in the right context. So when it's not talking about animals in this section, it's saying, and when infused into men, they don't cause just a small uproar, it causes a lot of trouble. The pores where the animal spirit or the soul of the man resides gets clogged up. Okay, so the soul gets constricted and blocked and the spirit gets confined and displaced and pushed out by the bulk of the demon, which is the cause of how they agitate the man or the woman's personality. So the spirit, which is the higher self, which is the divine portion or supposed to be the divine portion of humankind, the divine essence gets shoved out and the demon gets to fuck up the personality. It causes a, a great agitation because at that point, once the spirit gets displaced because of the demon, the bulk of the demon, the soul is only the only thing there, but the soul gets blocked. So the demons running the show. And then they injure the person's faculties, abilities, thought processes, cognition, memory. OK, so they fuck up the personality. They injure their faculties and they obstruct their ability to move so they can control their motion. All right. Their ability to walk, talk, move, flex, etc. When a subterranean species of demon assaults a person. He agitates and distorts the person who is possessed and he speaks through him using the tongue of the suffering person as if it were his own body part or member. But if a lucifugus demon and these are the ones they said had no sentience, really no intelligence. If a lucifugus demon covertly or clandestinely possesses somebody, it occasionally causes a relaxation of the whole system of the person. And this can stop the ability for the of the person to speak and it will almost leave the sufferer dead. So in other words, if a lucifugus, because they're very low and they don't really have intelligence, instead of making the person go wild for the night, like the subterranean demons and the aerial and the water demons can do because they're higher minded and they're intelligent and crafty. The lucifugus demon being very low and malicious will actually cause the person's whole system to relax and be like they're dead. So like a catatonic or vegetative state. A lot of people, I'm not just saying that because this is in this text, but because I think I've said it before and I've even discussed this privately with relatives and friends and stuff in the past. A lot of people who have are in comas or have had 
strokes or are currently in nursing facilities or currently having to be cared for by a family member or home health aide who cannot physically move, they are possessed with a demon. You may have heard pastors say this before, ministers, reverends, etc. It is true. This is one of these lower base demons. This is what they do. They relax the whole body and the person is like alive, but they seem to be dead. Ooh, this text is off the chain. I would definitely rewrite this and edit these typos, but it's off the chain. Ooh, some wisdom and knowledge up in here. This last species, the Lucifugus demon, who makes the person relax in like catatonic or vegetative state, is more allied to the earth than to the than the others are, and is therefore excessively cold and dry, and it can possess anyone secretly. It will blunt or hide and obscure all of the suffering person's natural power, but because it is an irrational species and it is totally devoid of any intellect or smarts, being governed by irrational whims, so th doing things without speak, uh, without um, sense and without any reasoning behind it, it has no more dread of reproof than the most intractable wild beef beast, for which reason it is designated with great propriety, dumb and deaf. Nor can a sufferer be dispossessed, but by divine power, procurable by prayer and fasting. So what Thracian is saying, the Lucifugus species of demon is ruled by the earth, closer to the earth. It blunts out and blocks and hides the person who's possessed by its natural power. But because it's an irrational being with no smarts, and it's governed by irrational things and whims. It has no more dread of reproof than the most intractable wild beast. So what they're saying is this motherfucker don't have no good goddamn sense. It don't give a damn about whether you're going to get it out. It, it's, it's not scared of you. Just like a wild beast ain't scared of you. It's not scared of you. Not scared. It's not worried about being reproofed or corrected or rebuffed. It don't give a damn. It don't have no dams, no fucks to give because it ain't got no goddamn sense. Only things that have rational thinking, intellect and sentience gives a fuck. You cannot give a fuck if you don't have no fucks to give. Fucks are rational thought. Because it wouldn't be a fuck given if you didn't reason that the fuck needed to be given. Huh? See, I'm giving you some urban intellectual philosophical discourse right now if it if it's a fuck you have reasoned that it must be a fuck to be given if the fuck is not given it either is not purposeful to be given or you don't have no reasoning to even have a fuck to give all right <laughs> so it's saying it ain't worried about being cast out bitch all right these things are deaf and dumb. Okay. The Lucifugus species. The sufferer cannot be dispossessed or cannot have this thing driven out of it except for by divine power, which is accessible or prescribed by using prayer and fasting. Now, I'm going to end it after this second paragraph. Uh, so two more paragraphs and then I'm going to close this because uh, I'm going to have to come back and do a part two because I'm more uh, there's only 34 pages and I'm on page 22. So I'll do a part two to finish the last 12. It says, but Marcus. So the monk is like, so Thracian, Thracian said, he said, but Marcus said, I physicians would persuade us to be of another type of thinking. For the physicians or the doctors say that such affections are not produced by demons, but are occasionally produced by an excess or deficiency of humors, um, meaning medical humors, or by a disordered state of the animal spirits. And accordingly, the, the doctors would try to cure them by medicine or a diet regimen, but would not try to cure them by incantations or purifications like prayers and fasting. An incantation is a prayer and purification would be like fasting and detoxing. Marcus said, it is not at all surprising if doctors make these assertions because they don't understand anything except that is which 
by their senses. So they go by science and their five senses. Their whole attention is devoted to the body. So they cannot tell you is what Marcus the monk is saying. They can't tell you how to deal with a spirit because all they care about is the five senses of the body. What is physically of the body, of the material. They can't tell you about a spirit and how to deal with it. Lethargy, meaning fatigue, sluggishness. Syncope, which is also known as fainting. Cases of hypochondria or thinking you got all kind of different diseases and illnesses. Delirium, which these demons can remove by, or which, excuse me, which the doctors can cure by causing a person to uh, vomit or can evacuate their stomach or can use unguents, which is a type of medical treatment. It is quite correct to say that there are effects of disordered humors. So the doctors, you know, yeah, there are things that happen when someone has humors that are disordered. But enthusiasm and mildness and possessions in which one is seized, he is incapable of making any use of his judgment, his tongue, his imagination, his senses. It is quite another thing moves and excites them and speaks that the person seized is unconscious of what they're saying. They don't know what they're saying, though. Occasionally there may be some prophecies or something like that. With what propriety can these effects be called the disordered movements of matter? So Marcus is saying the doctors will say, yeah, there are some things. Marcus is saying there are some things that can be caused by humors being disordered in the human body. But when a person has a seizure and they're not able to use their judgment, they can't speak. OK, they can't use their imagination. They can't reason and use their senses. They can't touch, smell, taste, see, hear, etc. This is quite another thing. OK. When a person is in this state, Marcus is saying there must be another thing that must move them and excite them because the person can't move and use their senses and abilities and faculties on their own. This means that the person that is possessed or seized is not even knowing what they're saying because they're not in control. So, but sometimes they will prophesy something. So when this is going on and the person doesn't know what they're doing and can't control it, what in the world can a doctor fix in this regard? How can this be of the body when the person can't even use their judgment properly and is not in control of the body? It means the spiritual is what Marcus is saying. So I'm going to close this at this point because it's going into another part of the conversation. And I will record a part two. Thank you for listening to this long recording. This is a great text, but like I said, it's only 12 more little pages and um, then it'll be completed. And then um, I may not get to it today, but I will have another lecture coming up soon on astrology. Um, I underestimated how long this might take me. So if I don't get to it today uh, and post it later, then I will post the astrology. Um, actually, what I'll do is I'll do the part two first of this text. That way you have part one and part two. Um, I will make sure that the chapters allowable chapters is activated. I don't know how that works on the viewers end, but I don't know how that works. But either way, I'll record part two and then I'll do the astrology lecture later or tomorrow or another day soon um, because the astrology lecture is not that long. But this text was and I knew it would be at least like three, three hours because I was ad libbing and making sure to explain and add context and stuff. So thank you for listening. Please like, share and subscribe if you enjoy this content. Thank you for your bookings, your shares, your subscriptions, your donations. All right. Your positive emails and messages. Um, there's a number of you that I have to email back that I have not emailed in quite a while. I will be taking care of that ASAP. Sometimes I'm just not in, in my emails like that. And but um, I will get I do take care of my business emails. But if it's not urgent, then I will respond to it as my guys tell me to but i just want y'all to know that i appreciate all of your kind words encouragement and i will be back with part two all right and the astrology lecture within the next 24 to 48 hours or whenever i have a chance in between the other stuff i have to do and my errands and all that and so take care um 
Feel free to look this text up on your own if you want. It's called On the Operation of Demons, Demons, Celis's Dialogue, Michael Celis, 1682. And again, Thracian, it was worded the way the foreword was worded, which was probably probably a typo. It made it seem as though Thracian was a demon having a conversation with a man, Timothy the doctor. But Thracian is a man, too. OK, so I've established that by reading through the text. Thracian is a man. So it's a conversation between two men on the nature of demons. And it's very I think it's a cool, short little text and cool for anybody that's interested in occult occultism and in um, and demonology. So this text has confirm many of the things that I've told you about demonology and I had never read it before. So thank you and I'll talk to you soon. Namaste.